welcome. welcome. Yes. <laughs> welcome to Tweet Talk. Is it working? Tweet us if it's not working. Tell them to tweet me, and I'll respond. Tweet Brian, tweet Brian. and he'll respond. Give if, it's, if it's working, let, you can please see tell us that you can it's working. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Lauren? <laughs> 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 Is it okay? Is it working? They say it's working. Can you hear us? Can you see us and hear us? It's working. All right. Yay! Okay. Welcome to Jane Austen Tea Time. Today we're going to be learning about tea time in the 1800s. Lauren will be teaching us how to make scones, uh, a very famous tea time treat. Let's go around and introduce ourselves. First Lady Jade, please. Hi, I'm Jade. Everybody else is going to do an English accent. I never do. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Master Joyce. Yes, master of the home. Uh, my name is Lady Stepien Meredith. Hello, yes, I'm Lady Lopez. <laughs> I'm Miss Julia. Yes. Hello, my name is Yes. <laughs> and you're right, Honorable oh. Lord Congale. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. And Mr. Holden, of course. <laughs> Will be responding to Cheerio! <laughs> <laughs> and Bowsy the doggy. Lord Bowser's here. A tiny doggy friend. All right. Cool. Well, Lauren's going to start us off by telling us what she learned about tea time. Yes. In the 1800s. This is the early 1800s. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, um, persuasion takes place in 1816, does it not? Oh, beautiful. Wonderful. Yes. Um, so the tea party as we know it, with like tea and cakes and like all kinds of treats and stuff, didn't it actually exist until 1860, which was after Jane Austen died. Oh, wow. oh. Oh. She, she never had tea. Had tea. <laughs> Oh, so she was, the pirate hat is getting stuck on Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> if I go on a frame, I'll go on to the wheel. Right. Yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll Captain. Yeah. Captain. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so they didn't have tea parties, but they still had tea, which was a very um, popular refreshment, but it was more used just as that, as a refreshment. So they'd have a little bit of tea in the afternoon. Maybe they'd have like a little cake or something with it, but it was it was not like a big to do until the 1860s. Um, what happened? Well, the Duchess of Bedford. <laughs> oh, interesting you should ask. The Duchess of Bedford thought Thank that you. the the wealthy people were getting too hungry between luncheon and dinner, <laughs> so they created tea to um to like kind of buffer their appetite around like four o'clock. Huh. So they'd have tea with like all these different treats, so they wouldn't be too hungry when dinner came around. Because they wow. they ate dinner at like ten o'clock at night. Oh, so, oh. Like, dinner, yeah, I know. That's like fourth meal. Yeah. I know exactly. That's like, um, could you not just? This is a dumb question. Could you not just like get a snack? Was that inappropriate? I yeah, I think it had to be more regimented. Yeah, yeah so I sometimes they had I, like I actually have my Jane Austen handbook. Oh. You <laughs> can't just go into your kitchen and eat, right? Yeah, you didn't serve. Right. Oh yeah. So you, you couldn't can just like grab an apple out of the Oreos or crackers. Right. Oreos. Oreos. There were no meats. <laughs> well, there was the Ritz. There, were, there was the Ritz, but there were no Ritz. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. here, do you guys want to hear this real quick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, um, this is about tea time after dinner. They would have tea. Mm. <laughs> they had tea a couple times a day, uh, including after dinner. And this is, so this is a whole section about, like, meals and proper meal uh, etiquette. Oh, yes. So mm -hmm. it says, drinking tea and post-dinner entertainment. Follow the hostess to the dining room. This is after dinner. When the guests are finished with their dessert, the, her the hostess will rise. The ladies will retire to the drawing room for conversation, reading, gossip, and needlework Ooh. until the gentlemen deign to join them, usually 30 <coughs> to an hour later. If you are hoping to spend time with a particular gentleman, this time will pass very slowly. So read Shakespeare's sonnets <laughs> and poetry to properly reflect to your tortured state of mind. Uh, so, okay, okay, so then when the gentlemen have returned to the drawing room, offer to help the young ladies of the house pour out the coffee and tea. Pouring beverages offers an excellent opportunity for a bit of conversation with a certain gentleman. If he brings back his cup for more, assume he's interested. 
That's referring to a famous scene in Pride and Prejudice, where Elizabeth is waiting for Darcy to come get coffee, and he finally does. And she's like, how are you? And he's like, fine. And then he walks away again, and she's like, ah. Um, well, that's that's pretty much it. In Jane Austen's time, it was more of a refreshment, and um, but so today we did want to have like more of a tea party, so we're gonna assume that um, we're gonna fast forward to the 1860s. So yes, much better than the 1920s. But scones, the scones, or the 1920s. But scones were a very common uh, little treat to have with your tea, even before the the practice of a tea party was invented. Lovely. Hmm. Yes. What is a scone? I've never had one. <laughs> really? You've never had one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my first tea party. Oh. <laughs> um, the scone is rather like a cross between a biscuit and like a cookie or a muffin. Uh-huh. It's drier than a muffin, but it's not quite as flaky as a, as a biscuit. Like a harder, crumblier. Yum, yum, yum! <laughs> a Mr. Dale seems scandalized by the idea yeah. of a scone. Yeah. You've had a scone before. You're gonna see a scone and you're, you're gonna. gonna... It's like a yeah. croissant? No, it's not at all like a It's like a harder biscuit. Yeah. Hard biscuit. Have you ever had biscuit hard... biscuits? You're making yeah, it sound terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, it's shape like really the... hard biscuit. Like, right? Really hard. Really hard. Yeah. 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 A nice somewhere between a rock and a biscuit. So oh, goodness. This may seem like a silly question, but was tea always caffeinated? Mm, I notice? think, yes, because they actually caffeinated. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. So yeah. why would they have it so late? Would they, damn. Oh, they How did they sleep? I didn't get it up late. Actually, in this I had no idea. I would think it would be in bed by eight. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, they don't eat till 10. They're this off late. Is, this is a day in the life of a Regency lady. At 7 a.m. you rise, 7 to 7.30 you wash, tidy your hair, and dress. 7.30 to 8 a.m. you meet your housekeeper, choose the dinner menu. 8 to 9 a.m. look in the nursery, make sure the children are awake, washed, dressed, fed, and usefully employed. 9 to 10 a.m. practice your instrument. 10 to 11 you finally eat breakfast. I would Where is Netflix? Die. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. From 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. <laughs> 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yeah. 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can pay morning calls, or you stay in and receive your own callers. Between calls, take care of darning and other family sewing. While guests are present, only do fancy needlework. From 3 to 4, <laughs> 3 to 4 p.m., tend to your correspondence, write letters, and answer invitations. From 4 to 5, play with the children, or read an improving book. Five to six, retire to your dressing room and rest and dress for dinner. Six to eight, dine. Eight to eleven, spend time with your family or guests you have invited to dine or drink tea. Eleven to eleven thirty, undress and prepare for bed. And eleven thirty p.m., retire. So that's a long day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. although they didn't include this here, but somewhere in here I read about supper time because they had like two dinners. Yeah. Mm. They had dinner and then they had like Great. supper, which Whoa. was at sometimes like eleven or twelve. Or oh my god. Three. I have another stupid question. Sam. How did they wake up? <laughs> In the morning. I know. Because they didn't have like alarms. Yeah. And I assume Coo-coo-coo. the servants. Really? I don't know. Coo I think they have a roosters. Did they have roosters? Did they have roosters? I have grandfather bucks. I think they have grandfather bucks. Yeah. I don't know roosters. They were always up. They were always up. Maybe their bodies just were trained. Yeah. should get into a routine. I feel like without an alarm, I would never sleep in. I feel like we're on a glass bottom boat ride. And you can see Bob. I feel like we need to be stepped in like a girl. Yes. Okay, cool. Meredith, <laughs> 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 uh, can I just say, this is really good, and I hate tea. This tea is really? great. What kind of tea yeah. is it? Is it cause of comments? Probably. Really? I put two different kinds. Oh, oh. Yeah, mix and It's really good. I, don't know I only know the teas they list in Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> 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 That's a lot. <laughs> that, you pretty much know how the teas are. Is it? Oh, good. Okay. All right, Perfect. you guys are going to learn how to make scones. Yeah, let's Ooh. make them. Yes! So here I have, these are all my, the different flowers that I listed out on the Facebook page. So there's almond flour, oat flour, and then tapioca starch in here. What? Which are all, they're all gluten-free flowers, so that's why they're weird. But Traditionally have, gluten-free flowers. Yes, flowers. traditionally gluten-free <laughs> scones also uh, yes. at tea parties. Sorry. So if you don't have, um, if you don't have gluten-free flowers, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? You don't I'm to trying to get it closer. I'm trying to get it closer. Well, stop. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Let's put it on the spot. 
Oh, wow. Oh, if, you have, if you don't have gluten-free flours, I look like Rambo. If you don't have gluten-free flours, <laughs> <laughs> you can use the same amount, which is 12 ounces of uh, regular flour. So this is flour, my flaxseed, my baking powder and baking soda, and salt is in here. So then we're going to add our sugar. That's a quarter cup of sugar. I'm just going to whisk that around like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't even see the sugar and then, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> then you have two tablespoons of lemon zest, which you get from grating a lemon. That's just a lot of zest. Just in there, Lady Marta, please, if you will. Just oh, mix yes, that yes. in there. Oh, Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you would have seen how comical that was. Okay, good. Now, what you want to do is you have your stick of butter that's cold. You want to make sure it's really cold because that's um, important for the texture of the scones. So then. You're going to take that, and you can either use a pastry cutter or like a food processor if you have that, or you can use your hands, which is what I use. <laughs> I washed my hands, but um, please do that before you do this. And you're just going to um, break up the butter into the flour until it's like little pieces of like coarse sand almost. It's like little pea-sized pieces all throughout the flour. So while I do that, would you please regale us with some more tales of Jane? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, that seems like it's going to take a really long time. It's not. <laughs> the meat loaf. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, then. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we uh, read one of the first readings from Persuasion. Oh, yeah. Persuasion is the book we just finished. Mm. Um, it's about a woman named Anne who was in love eight years ago, mm. and the man she was in love with asked her to marry him, but then her friends persuaded her to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, to say no. Yeah. And now it's like eight years later and she misses him. So she regrets? She regrets it all yeah. the time. Oh. She big time. <clears throat> and now they're like in the same social circle again and they have to see each other all again. Uh -oh. And he's like ignoring her. So they, oh. yeah. Super salty. As he all should right. be. These problems are very modern problems as well. Yeah. yeah. These yeah, problems they, have always existed. They're always yeah, existed they from the beginning of time. time. So we've got some great readings here. <laughs> Let's see, what's this first one? Oh, this is, this is fun. Okay, this is fun, guys. <laughs> this first reading is just a fun quote. Uh, let me make sure I know who gave it to us. So I give them credit, where credit is due. Oh, Lauren, look at your done. Reading. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Yay! That was great! Oh, okay. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> That's incredible technology. That yeah. Is. Wow. Hey, Rick Richter. Oh, so that 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 oh my god. <laughs> this is outrageous. Oh, so Rick Richter. This is so funny. Oh, this is okay. This is from Jordan. You do the monocle. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No. Oh wait, you should do the monocle while you read it. Here, you yes. you go ahead and keep reading. We'll bring more effects back in a moment. Oh. Yeah! There it is. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, we need a lady to read this. One of our actresses. Julia? Mark? Go ahead, some Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, is, this is just a fun part because Sir Walter is uh, Anne's dad. He's kind of just oh, this a-hole. He's, like cool, he's like the cool dad. And he's like the cool mm -hmm. leader of the social group, which is funny because he's her dad. Cool, he's like he's trying to be like, cool, or he's actually and, like everyone's like, oh, what's daddy doing today? Oh, oh I'll so do the like same thing. Which is so weird. He's like Regina George. But he, he's, no, but he's the worst. Uh, so we don't like. We're talking about Walter. Yeah. yeah. No, he's awful. He's like he's like the cool dad who like thinks he's really cool and like wears like Ed Hardy shirts and, oh, yeah. and like has a lot of money. We so. don't want to offend anyone's yeah. dad out there. Who yeah, yeah if your dad wears Ed Hardy shirts, I'm really sorry. It's fine. But, There's cool people that wear Affliction shirts and whatnot. Sure. <laughs> They're probably like UFC fighters. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but the, he's like he's really concerned with money, and he that's pretty much it. He's concerned with looking really good mm. and yeah. having a lot of money, like okay. to the point oh, where he won't associate with ugly people. That's what. And so, like, okay. And ugly people back then was like if you had freckles because it meant you were outside. <gasps> oh. oh. Yeah. So it meant you were like lower class. Right? Yeah, like oh. if you were in the navy, like you would have like a weathered face, meaning you were like really freckled, and they'd be like, oh, gross. Oh. That's exactly what this paragraph is about. Oh, hey. About. Uh, because he's he basically Sir Walter has screwed up big time and he's lost all the family's money but he's like too afraid to accept that he's like mm. he's just ignoring oh, the problem wow. and everyone's like okay well we need to get rid of some of your houses yeah like he so, lost the money mm, buying dumb crap that buying he didn't stupid need. stuff he's just an idiot. <sighs> so anyway they're trying to find somebody to take his house and it's a desperate situation but he's treating it like 
well, whoever it is better be good looking. <laughs> so they found this guy oh, who's man. in the Navy who has now gotten great money from the Navy and wants to take his house. So he's like, well, I if he's in the Navy, he probably has coarse skin. I don't want that <laughs> one taking my house. Ew! Oh so my this is God. the paragraph like that Jordan just... picked out. Jordan's really funny. But this is uh, this is Mrs. Clay. She's talking about um, why it's okay that he has coarse skin and like why it's okay that he's in the Navy. So just read this one okay. paragraph. This to Ms. hear? Clay. Yeah. Nay, Sir Walter, cried Miss Clay. This is being severe indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like trying to read under this little page, but oh yeah, this is Mar, by the way, guys. She's my best friend from home. She's coming to see the show tonight, and she was also in Little White Lie. If you guys are starting, yeah, oh. she was in Love Grenade. Yes, yeah, she was. That was so much fun. <laughs> Have a little mercy on the poor man. We are not all born to be handsome. The sea is no beautifier, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> Sarahs do grow old the times. I have observed it. They soon lose the look of youth. But then, is it not the same with many other professions? Perhaps most others? Soldiers in active service are not better off. And even in the quieter professions, there is a toil and a labor of the mind, if not of the body, which <laughs> leaves a man's looks to the natural effect of time. The lawyer plods quite careworn. The physician is up at all hours, traveling in all weather, and even the clergyman. She stopped a moment to consider what might do for the clergyman. And even the clergyman, you know, is obliged to go into the infected rooms and expose his health and looks to all the injuries of the poisonous atmosphere. In fact, as I have long been convinced through every profession is necessary and honorable in its turn, it is only the lot of those who are not obliged to follow any, who can live in a regular way in the country, choosing their own hours, following their own pursuits, and living on their own property without the torment of trying for more. It is only their lot, I say, to hold the blessings of health and a good appearance to the utmost. I know no other set of men but what lose something of their personableness. <laughs> personableness. Personableness. When they cease to be quite young. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very That's good. Great. That was hard. So basically, she's saying like you know every man ages and every man who's respectable, they you know. Yeah. Gonna end, yeah. You know? Every job you have, regardless of what it is, is gonna make you look old. But it's this dude life. is like Paris Hilton, so he doesn't really have to have a job. He just kind of hangs out. Oh. Yeah. This and like exfoliates. He's <laughs> 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 like, looks good. I guess. Yeah. yeah it's time yeah. to exfoliate. Okay. Are we ready for yes. the next step? So this is your next step. After you've properly fondled your butter into your oh, 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 yes. oh, 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 skin. Um, it does. It looks like oh. sand. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take um, first your egg. Do you have one egg like this? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, this is how you make buttermilk if, you, if you're dairy-free. You do... Um, a half a cup of your favorite dairy-free milk, and then you add a teaspoon of either vinegar or lemon juice, and you let it curdle. So that is how you make buttermilk. So oh, this is buttermilk? yeah. So oh. this is dairy-free buttermilk right here. You have a half a cup. You want to add it though in just in a little bit. Oh, you buttermilk. just want the dough to get like just wet. Wow. So. Mm. This is getting a little so, bit. Guys, stop it. I Coffee. hope you asked for the dough's so, number. Yeah. So, oh, so, so you add half of it first. Oh. And then just mix it until the dough is just moist. Oh. So oh. Yeah. And then if you need more milk, go ahead and add more. Mm. But you don't want mm. the batter to be too sloppy. So you just oh, want to yeah. go little by little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to talk It does look like sand. Yeah. It looks good. It looks good. good. So, good. So, kind of I know. Let's just eat it like that. We're going to eat it, guys. Can we just spoon that on our plate? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... There you go. Mine might be a little bit too wet, but that's okay. Uh, so now you have your dough. <laughs> guys, guys, we're ladies. <laughs> now you have your dough. So now what you're gonna do is you can put it on a prepared baking sheet. So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna take your baking sheet and you're gonna put parchment paper on it, or you can use 
tin foil with like cooking spray on it so it doesn't stick. Um, and you're going to bake these at 425 degrees for like 10 minutes until they're golden brown on top. You can either bake them as little drop biscuits, which is what I'm going to do because it to bakes faster, or to make like a proper scone shape, you can put it all in the middle in like a circle and bake it as one big circle and then halfway through the cooking process, yeah, it's quiet. Halfway through the cooking process, you <laughs> score it so it's little triangles. And then you can bake them like that. I had that thing hopping around. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm going to drop these and bake them and then if you guys wanna yeah. while they're baking, we can so continue. Cool. Yeah. Will you show you pop over and yeah. show us after you, yeah. 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 you are you doing yeah. little like little circles like <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna do them like how about your clock? Bowser, get yeah, it's Bob my Bowser. camera. Bowser, move. So this is how you make, like, drop biscuits, is you just take them like that and drop them like that into little mounds. Flop just it. like that. Just flop it. it up. And that's how you do it. Flop. So I'm going to go do these in the back <laughs> all right. so I don't take up all the time. Can I? I'm going to zoom out again. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, okay. You... With our sophisticated zooming out technology. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so oh good. Eric, you got a schooner or, or something's gotta happen. Yeah, you look fancy. Yeah, yeah, maybe I should look back. Yeah, look from the back. Yeah, look from the back. Put the whole stalling back. There we go. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, that's that's no. right. Alright. Uh, okay, cool. Well, let's continue with uh, our persuasion sure. readings. <laughs> We're done with this quote, so Thanks for boom. Doing. Boom. Good job, George. I want to cover That's up. Fun. Okay. Oh, this is a part I marked off. These, this is like just reminds me of like high school times when you like have a crush on someone, or when you've been dating someone and then and then you break up, but you still miss them, and then somebody just tells you like. Oh, I heard they were talking shit about you. And then they tell you that, and then it just haunts you for forever. Yeah. That's no good. Even if they don't say they talk shit about you, even if, like, oh, yeah, they said hi. Yeah. Something crap, you're like, yeah. 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 So this is a part that really just haunts Anne, and it's imp it's an important part of the book. So Captain Wentworth is back in her life, and everyone loves <laughs> Captain Wentworth, yeah. but they don't know oh, that they used to be engaged. So they have no idea that she's being tortured at the, by the side oh. of them. <sighs> so everyone's like, you know... Oh, Captain yeah. Wentworth is so wonderful. Don't you love Captain uh, Wentworth? Uh, oh, that's so awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this is um this is Mary. And Mary is like she's super uh Mary is like uh, she's a hypochondriac. Yeah. She's she's mm. Anne's sister. Nice. And she's always like, I am so Sick and no one's paying any attention to me. <laughs> but then you know when they are like, all right, well, stay at home and rest. We're gonna go to this party. Uh, She'll be like, what are you guys doing? Wait for me. <laughs> and she's suddenly better. She's the, the youngest little sister, and she's oh. had a, a rough, not a rough life. But people aren't very nice to her because she's the youngest and like yeah. not cute sister. Mm. <laughs> and like since they the say family, she's not cute. well, the family only cares about looks. So the dad's like chooses his favorites based on how pretty they are. And the youngest, like, isn't the prettiest, so he's kind of like, hmm, we're not going to go to a party. Maybe you could just stay home with your face. <laughs> but, like, so he's not very nice. So she kind of, like, developed into this poopy person. She's a poopy. She needed to get attention on her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's very insecure. This is one of those moments. Uh, okay. uh, sure. Can you, when you're reading Mary, will you do it as though you're a whiny hypochondriac? Sure. Oh my gosh. That's your motivation. Oh, I'm going to do my best. So Captain, <laughs> Captain Wentworth has just left, and Mary is like just basically this... talking to Anne, being like, oh, Captain Wentworth is so great. Wasn't he so great? So this is Mary. So, and where, where am I going to? Uh, Captain Wentworth. Just this end of this quote? Uh, or... Let's see here. I have a question yeah, if I could interrupt for a second. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Twitter. This will... uh, so from Brett Twitter. McKenzie, okay. or their Twitter handler, Twiddle. <laughs> their Twitter handle. J J M F is wondering: Do we keep mixing with our hands after we add the liquids? If we're not you supposed can. to, can we anyway? Yeah, you totally can. I love mixing things with my hands. I just thought it would be maybe people wouldn't like to watch me manhandle a bunch of wet, sloppy liquid <laughs> with my hands. But usually I do. So go ahead. <laughs> Any other All right. Oh, um, this is no, no, I'll, I'll keep looking. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. This yeah. If you guys need to tell us anything, like. Hey, we can't see an Fousey or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, if that's an issue. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna right have to here. get a, a really good Fousey shot at the end. For sure. Yeah. It's funny yeah. because while Lauren's right giving, here. Yeah, while the, the table is glass. Presentation, 
you could see Bowsy underneath the glass table peering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So since it's glass, all the crumbs, he's like trying to get them from like another yeah. angle, but he like doesn't understand why it's not working. Yeah. Um, you're making scones, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, well, one other person, sorry to interrupt again, but someone brought up uh, that they said, it's, someone's like, I'm from England, and then they said, <laughs> uh -oh. it's, it's actually oh. pronounced scones. I guess oh, yeah. You forget really? About scones. Yeah. Ooh, what? That's a vape. So, not in America. That's how they pronounce it. But this is an American Jane Austen. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. scones. <laughs> All right. I promise, I promise to get Bowser in the shot next time he comes around. He will. All right, go ahead, Julia. This is right. Mary Musgrove talking to Anne. <clears throat> Ready? <sighs> Captain Wentworth is not very gallant by you, Anne, though he was so attentive to me. Henrietta asked him what he thought of you when they weren't away, and he said, you were so altered, he should not have known you again. Mary had no feelings to make her respect her sisters in a common way, but she was perfectly unsuspicious of inflicting any peculiar wound. Altered beyond his knowledge, Anne fully submitted in silent, deep mortification. <laughs> Doubtless, it was so, and she could take no revenge, for he was not altered, or not for the worse. She had already acknowledged it to herself, and she could not think differently. Let him think of her as he would. No, the years which had destroyed her youth and bloom had only given him a more glowing, manly, open look, in no respect lessening his personal advantages. She had seen the same Frederick Wentworth. Oh, oh that's sad. That's so that's sad. sad. So, yeah. Also, I'm she's sorry. 27. And like in that day, they treat her like she's right. You're an old. Lady. It's like you're spinster yeah. at that point, and men really? only get more beautiful and Ew. like distinguished. And they're yeah. marrying sixteen-year-olds, literally marrying sixteen-year-olds, oh, yeah. um, which was like fine. <laughs> that was fine. And like women at twenty-seven are like cat lady, right? like after, already. Well, oh. After like twenty-three, it was a done deal, right? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Years, because like literal was... six, like in um, Sense Sensibility, Marianne was sixteen, yeah. and she married Colonel Brandon, who was like thirty-eight. Oh, yeah. And it was like cool, oh. and they were like, yay! And even me, I was like, hooray! But <laughs> like, Ew. then you think about it, like, oh, yeah, no, no. Sorry. yeah. That's, that's, sad. that's sad because she loves him, and she, she thinks that he's still mm -hmm. just the same old guy. And another thing that they keep talking about in this book, they bring it up a lot of times, is how because she's been so depressed for seven years, she does just have like sunken in eyes, <laughs> right? Just like pale skin, uh. and she's just so sad looking. Everyone's like, oh, she used to be so. Pretty. Yeah, so, <laughs> and she's had like other men propose right. to her, and she's turned them all down because yeah. she's been like heartbroken, and they're all like, mm? "Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not okay. the list." Oh. Two questions for oh. Lauren. One is, how long should they bake them for? I forgot. That's from Sarah Brosh. Okay, you should bake them for eight to ten minutes, um, or just until they're like golden brown on the top and bottom, so you can kind of figure it out. And Ray at Totally Not Ray is wondering. <laughs> Can we add more lemon zest for flavor, or would that be, or, or would that overdo it? No, totally. You can totally add more of that if you want it really super lemony. But we're also gonna put a glaze on them when they're done, and that's also very lemony. So mm -hmm. you might want to weigh, so weigh, excited. you know, how lemony you want. Okay. Just like right in your elbow right now. <laughs> I like yeah. that. I like that. Bro. All right, cool. Let's um, let's do another. There's a hair in there. <laughs> <laughs> It's her bookmark. I'm eating all these <laughs> one single strand of sandwiches. This is so hungry. This is actually one of our times. On the way over. Lauren, is it alright with you if you put the recipe on the Facebook page later? Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. I totally will. Alright guys, this is a sad part. Eric, do you want to read this? Sure. This is this is sad, but it's a little funny. And I feel like it's relatable. We've all, we've all like, especially in high school when you like, are in high school and you <laughs> date someone and then you break up and then you have to see them in class yeah. all the time. Yeah, oh, the yeah. worst. Oh, that's the worst. The worst. Yeah. That's the worst. So mm. this is kind of just this is a little paragraph about those like sad times. Let me see if um. It's so nice being an adult and like not having to see somebody if you don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's true. so nice it's like so not true. having to do that. Yeah, this is from so Sabrina. Sucked. No. Yeah. I, I like yeah, I'm sorry. I like, yeah. I like yeah. Yeah. Crushes are fun. But crush is different from like being horrifically broken up with and then having to sit next to the math. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. that's true. No, I never dated anybody, so I couldn't get broken up with. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wasn't that busy. We picked the right guy to read it. Yeah. Sad, sad, sad. All right. back to the sad guys. <laughs> Sabrina picked this one. Sabrina actually picked a little further on, but I thought we should start a little earlier. Uh, so why don't you read? Um, I can pick one. 
Tell me when to stop. Well, it's all so. Lauren's good. not talking to the table. She's talking. Oh, to she the is talking to the table. <laughs> yeah, Bowser's right there. Bowser's Such Bowser's a cutie. Yeah. Ready for a Bowser shot? Yeah. yeah, let's do a Bowser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bowser. Yeah. Bowser. Yeah. Bowser. Yeah. Bowser. Yeah. Bowser. Yeah. Bowser. Hey. Yeah. Wait. There you go. Bowser. Captain Wentworth and Anne Elliot were repeatedly in the same circle. They were soon dining in company together at Mr. Musgrove's, for the little boy's state could no longer supply his aunt with the pretense for absenting herself. And this was but the beginning of other dinings and other meetings. Whether former feelings were to be renewed must be brought to the proof. Former times must undoubtedly be brought to the recollection of each. They could not but be reverted to. The year of their engagement could not but be named by him in the little narratives or descriptions which conversation called forth. His profession qualified him. His disposition led him to talk. And that was the year six. That happened before I went to sea in the year six. Occurred in the course of the first evening they spent together, and though his voice did not falter, and though she had no reason to suppose his eye wandering toward her while he spoke, Anne felt the utter impossibility from her knowledge of his mind that he could be unvisited by the remembrance any more than herself. Mm. Oh, so there must... awful. he's avoiding talking. He's he's not avoiding talking about that time period. But, he but he's, yeah, he's, he's just like actually... acting like they weren't engaged at right. that point. Right. Mm. And so, since uh, people don't only if that's the people the know, so she can't that say anything engaged. about it. Right. Yes. And she doesn't want to seem like you know, dust bread or anything like that yeah, either. So like, that's the worst. she what what they were talking about too is her nephew got in a bad accident, and broke what is collarbone or something, um, which was like you could have died because I don't know. Cool, they, yeah, they don't. They don't. don't yeah, they can't either. like really fix it. Mm-hmm. But um, so Mary, the younger sister, who's kind of a dummy, um, it was her son, yeah. and she doesn't know how to take care of children and doesn't have the patience for them. So Anne was using his injury as an excuse to not be around. Yeah. So she was staying with him all the time, like, oh, can't go. But she'd worn out that excuse. But now that excuse is kind of worn out, so she's being forced to hang out with him all the time. Mm-hmm. Meredith wants to read this last sentence. Yeah, this is the sentence that Sabrina actually picked up. Now they were as strangers, nay, worse than strangers, <laughs> for they could never become acquainted. It was a perpetual estrangement. Oh. oh, yeah, that's it's awful. awful. It's yeah. really awful. It's sad. It's so sad. So sad. It's and what's sad. worse is that literally everybody that she knows is like cannot stop talking about how great he is because yeah. he is super great. And he's like you know flirting with these other girls. Yeah, younger girls, day. by the way, which is important to mention. They are both like he's flirting with these two young hotties, like right in front of her that she's like friends with. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's gross. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does she feel like he's doing it on purpose to hurt her, or is he just I moved on? She, just, yeah. Yeah, he moved on. He's, yeah. It's kind of like, the way that it reads, you kind of assume that he's being a shit, like, on yeah. purpose. A because little he bit. was hurt by her rejection. Incredibly gotcha. hurt. Like, he keeps dropping, there's a quote we'll read eventually, um, but he keeps, like, dropping little hints, and, like, in conversation with these younger chicks, like, I like women who are like this, and not women that are like this, and, like, kind of calling it out when he knows she's, like, listening, but he'll never really say anything about it, because, again, nobody knows. Also, when he first shows up to this town, he's, like, talking to his family members, and he's like, I'm going to get married. I don't care who she is. I don't need yeah. to know her. I just want to <laughs> yeah. get married. So he's just got stuff on. Okay, this part... Um, yeah. This part, uh, today, um, Anne Elliot will be played by Lauren, and ooh, Captain Wentworth will be played by Joey. So will you guys read this part? Yeah, where is it? This is when, <laughs> oh, I'll show you. This is when, this is when, uh, Anne and Captain Wentworth are first alone together. This mm. is the first time they're alone together after eight uh, years. Another question. Well, there are a few. One is like, what do you preheat the oven to? But four twenty-five. Four twenty-five preheat the oven to. One is wondering if if you can substitute starch. Is there any sort of starch substitute? They're allergic to starch. To any starch? Yeah. 
Um, if you can have white rice flour, that's a good substitute. Um, okay. Other than that, that's kind of the only substitute for starch. And okay. one person is wondering if they can substitute lemon zest for red vines. <laughs> Um, absolutely not. Please don't ever mention those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, cool. Dan, Dan Strauss says, could Meredith answer EKG's question, please? Yeah. What about Netflix? Did they make time back in the 1800s? Dan, where are you? Come on. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, this is really awkward. No. Just, I've never read it before. Never Someone says, it for the first time. It's hard. Someone says right. Lauren's yeah, hair should be tied yeah. back for so hygienic are... reasons. They might have lost my hair at one point or another. <laughs> 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 you can read that you and then this? I'll read the quote. All right. What are you reading? Okay, so this is you. Me? No, that's Joey. And this is you. And you're just a dog, not a car. Are you excited or are you like worried? Or just the visions of what life could be? Okay, I'll read that. Yes, you want to read that. He's pretty calm. He's just hanging out under this table, like ready for food. Okay. Lauren. Oh, I mean, Joey, you start with that. I want a glass table. I love being able to see him. All right, you guys. This is an intensely awkward moment of between Captain Wentworth and um, and. He's just walked in thinking he's going to hang out with her family, and it's just her along with this boy, this little boy who's sick. Who's, like, <laughs> laying in the bed awkwardly watching this, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm in so much pain. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right, so go, so go ahead, guys. The surprise of finding himself almost alone with Anne Elliot deprived his manners of their usual composure. He started and could only say, I thought Miss Musgroves had been there. Miss Musgrove told me I should find them here before he walked out to the window to recollect, recollect himself and feel how he ought to behave. They are upstairs with my sister. They will be down in a few moments, I dare say, had been Anne's reply and all the confusion that was natural. And if the child had not called her to come and do something for him, she would have been out the room the next moment and released Captain Wentworth as well as herself. He continued at the window and after calmly and politely saying, I hope the little boy is better, was silent. She was obliged to kneel down by the sofa and remain there to satisfy her patient. And thus they continued a few minutes, when, to her very great satisfaction, she heard some other person crossing the little vestibule. She hoped, on turning her head, to see the master of the house. But it proved to be only to be one much less calculated for making matters easy. Charles Hayter, probably not at all better pleased by the sight of Captain Wentworth, than Captain Wentworth had been by the side of Anne. Uh, we can, all right, we can stop there. That's another oh. like, bit of drama. Oh. But that that went on for a long time. Like she's yeah. like she's like attending to the patient, meaning like fixing his bandages, like like giving water, like whatever he needed. The they're window. just standing there, like oh my god, they look so good. Oh, they're huge. You can see this. Oh. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> I'm eating so many. Oh. Yeah, yeah. All the oranges are almost gone. <laughs> you do have a lot of peels on that plate, Joe. All the oranges. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was like a communal dish for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, were you in the University of Michigan Pride and Prejudice? No. I was. We were. Oh, yeah. You guys were. I was. What you guys were all in Pride and Prejudice. What did you guys so play? What, what did you guys play? I saw that Facebook. Message the other day, I found the Facebook message where you were like, What are you doing? Yeah, it's like, girls' time. Yeah, oh, oh, all of us right. had it and then you dropped out. Wait, wait, yeah. what did you guys play in Pride and Prejudice? I was Mary, the sister who, uh, um, you were married. Yeah. Yeah. Mary. It's funny because the director didn't know, sorry, this is getting off uh, subject, but the director who came in and guest directed it didn't know us at all. He didn't know our personalities. He knew nothing about us. But we all got the perfect parts. Like, all the parts that we, like, wanted. Julia got the perfect parts. What, was the, <laughs> what, what were you? What, what were you? I didn't have any line. I yeah, didn't have a single was. line in the whole show. So, you had three? So what, but I had fun. It was such a fun show to be. What were you? Who were you? I was Lady Lucas. Why is that the perfect part for Julia? What it was actually. That was just random. Uh, yeah, everyone but Julia. Yeah. Lauren, what did you get? What were you? I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't even remember the name of the character I was guessing, but I, it, it was the girl that went to Captain Zuberg's so yeah. little, and she could only have one little sip of tea, and she was sorry, <laughs> she would, like, die. Who yeah. played Colonel Brandon? It was supposed That's to be a different Marine Star's ability. Oh, oh yeah, right? We, yeah. Talk Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I kind of love Pride and Prejudice when we watch it. Yeah, oh my right. god. Isn't there We're a girl that plays piano and... The and there's a girl that plays piano in every Jane Austen yeah. book. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have to play piano with a lot of respect for you. Yes, that's so. true. Uh, okay, cool. Let's this try. headband is like um, hurting my brain. I'm not I, I, I'm, oh, I'm so I, sorry. I, oh, do it. Uh, can you wear it, maybe? Sure. It's, it's Lady really Julia needs some... to excuse herself. I'm no. so sorry. I just want to know. It was such a lovely time today with you all. Are you leaving forever, Lady? Or are you coming back? Yeah. I'm leaving forever. Leaving forever. See yourself out. <laughs> you slowly back away. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Proper etiquette would be to stand and yeah, bow. This is making me look good. Oh. No, you look cute. <laughs> it looks good. It did some you good. never yeah. looked more masculine. Oh, yeah, that's oh. great. Uh, you both right, start cool. squeezing your mind. Yeah, you look cute. Yeah. I will try to turn your brain into a diamond. Mine is already <laughs> into a diamond. It's <laughs> so <laughs> This one's really nice. Hey, they Yeah, they're good on you. Oh, oh wait, Julia. Can you read one more, Mary? Oh, this Buster is not. Quote? Yeah, it's so really quick. loose. Yeah. Right, You're really good at me. Yeah, this, this is, is a perfect just, role for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Second next to your friend. <laughs> Actually, Timothy Douglas is uh, producing this in Michigan, and he's invited me back to play. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. This is a. Uh, this is Mary Musgrove. This is just a funny quote that I think I just marked. Where basically she's talking about how sick she is, and then everyone's going for a long walk, and then she's like, "Okay, okay. invite me." So this just this quote right there. there. Yeah, this is okay. a short one. Uh, I cannot imagine why they should suppose I should not like a long walk! <laughs> As she went upstairs, everybody is always supposing that I'm not a good walker. And yet they would not have been pleased if we had refused to join them when people come in this manner on purpose to ask us, how can one say no? Yeah. I like I like that so people yes. just assume she's not a good walker. Yeah. No, that, yeah. She's not a good walker. No, but that's a skill that you would have. Some people are good walkers and some people are not good walkers. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, keep in mind I haven't read persuasion. But don't you think that that's more of a comment on why she thinks she's never invited to take a turn in the garden, it's really just because she has an egregious oh, personality. Oh, yeah. So she uh, thinks it's because people think she's Brian, a bad woman. But in reality, oh, she's not a bad woman. She does it all the time, because too. She even is more complainy than people use it as an excuse. They're like, it's okay, we don't have to invite Mary. She's sick. <laughs> yeah. It's a catch-22. This is making the room seem darker. I told you, it's so tight. <laughs> This is making the rest of the So, I thought I was it's alone in there. Too tight. It's yeah, this is nice and... Are they ready? Loose. Oh, yes. You look beautiful. Alright, right, we'll, we'll do one more quote and I don't bet they'll be ready. This one, let me just look. Oh, and that was Jacqueline's quote. By the way, Jacqueline was the one who picked the awkward part after, when they first saw each other alone. <laughs> Do you want to explain what, depending on what the next quote is, like, give a little bit of what's happened since the last quote? Yeah. Because I think... Yeah, girl. <laughs> Thanks, <man. laughs> Smart. All right. The next quote is... Oh, oh, I just included... Julia's already gone, but I included the next quote, too, where after they're going for the walk, Mary goes... Uh, I declare I had no idea we'd walk this far. Well, now I think I better turn back. I'm excessively tired. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's like, ah. There's also a scene where they're like all sitting. They're like going on a nice walk, and they're all gonna sit and like talk. And she turns back because she's like, I don't remember which girl it was, maybe Henrietta, but she's like, she probably already got the best place to sit anyway, like the best yeah. patch of grass. <laughs> and then she turned to like didn't even home. Oh my. <laughs> the worst. Okay, this is this is the scene you picked, Jade. Why don't you talk about it? Oh, okay. Um, so what's been going on, I guess, unless you want to... No, go ahead. Okay. So what's been going on is that, um, so Wentworth's around, he's hitting on these two young hotties, who, uh, Anne's always around, and this is actually, and all they do, apparently, back in the day, is go on walks. Like, half this book is them going on a walk. Like, they're always, yeah. So, this is during a walk, um, and this is kind of what I was talking about before, about how he's not, like, talking to her outright, and he's not outright being like, I hate this girl. But he keeps bringing up the fact that his favorite thing in the world 
is a woman that like doesn't change her mind. Like a woman who's steadfast and, uh, and knows what she wants and doesn't take no for an answer. Like uh, very like you know like very stubborn, doesn't take no for an answer. Yada yada. Jam. Which is what he blames Anne for because mm -hmm. she changed her mind because her parents were like, "Don't do it. He's too yeah. low of status or whatever." Um, so he keeps like dropping those those little things. Like I love a woman who's like this, and I hate women who are like this. So this is kind of what he's doing, but he's. I really like this quote because he's doing it in a stupid way. He's like trying to fit an awkward analogy in to this like walk because he knows because this one young hottie who really likes him is talking to him and he knows Anne is listening. So he starts doing this dumb analogy that like I'm sure in his mind sounded really smart and to the young hottie she's like he's just so funny and clever. But like to Anne and to me and everybody else reading you're like this is so stupid. <laughs> it sounds so dumb. Um, but yeah, so that's your motivation is you're like Me? Yeah, you I want you to read it. Alright. So you you think you sound really smart. The girl you're talking to thinks you sound really smart, but I think you sound dumb. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so start it here and end where that little watermelon thing is. The here is a nut? Yep. Alright. Uh here is a nut. <laughs> oh, here's a nut. Here, so he's he's lifting like, a nut up. A They're nut. on a walk. Alright, so he goes. Here is a nut, <laughs> said he, catching one down from uh, an upper bough to exemplify a beautiful glossy nut, which, blessed with original strength, has outlived all the storms of autumn. Not a puncture, not a weak spot anywhere. This nut, he continued with playful solemnity, while so many of its brethren have fallen and been trodden underfoot, is still in the possession of all the happiness that a hazel nut can be supposed to be capable of. Uh, Stupid. That's smart. No, he's trying to... Okay. The problem is he's talking about a hazelnut being, like, so steadfast and amazing that, like, it has no puncture mark, like, it stood by the tree even through the winter. No, nah, dude, hazelnuts are supposed to fall and get in soil and stuff. But like, that one this is stupid. Get stepped on. Yeah, but he sounds dumb. <laughs> he sounds really dumb. You. And he's <laughs> He's probably talking But he's, he's saying it really loud because the girl that he's talking about is right here, who like wasn't steadfast and he's like saying it all loud like this nut rules and you suck. It's probably yeah. a metaphor for the man he wished he was. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna remember this speech for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not. Yeah, you're never. Obviously, you're gonna forget about it and like. <laughs> you wake up in the middle this of the night. night. This, this is a nut. Yeah. This is a nut. I'm gonna slap the nut. If you ever walk on a wall and you find a nut, I'm just gonna punch you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie, come say hi. Yeah. Just Thank peek you. in the camera really Jimmy quick. Baby say over hi. Here. You're not uh, in there yet. Get in the camera. <laughs> Jamie's been behind the computer this whole time. Yay. <laughs> This is Lady Jane. from Hello. Oh my god, they're ready already. Oh, they look I can't believe they exist so fast. I'm going to teach them how to glaze. Let's do that. Hi. Are you leaving too? Oh, okay. But I'll be able to show you. Tonight? I don't think I have tickets for tonight's show. No. Yeah. You want to go to the show tonight? Are there tickets? No, you can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, Lauren's going to show us how to glaze down scones. So, cool. Let's zoom in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You uh, pull that forward as I move this forward. Nice. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Cool. So hopefully your scones are done. These are what mine look like. Oh, they look great. Wow. Oh, yeah, those they are look great. really those great. Are so cool. they're they're great. Bowser, get out. Bowser wants some. Oh my god. So, so you blame? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna use this. Can yeah, you blame? So. Is that the ones you just made? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So oh, are these pre cooked? <laughs> <laughs> magic. TV magic. Oh. Um. So these are what mine look like. These are. Mine actually came up kind of big, so you can make them like whatever size you want. And the way that I like to glaze things is um, I like to put down um, tin foil, and then I have them on a cooling rack like this so they can like air out. And then when you glaze them, all the cool all the extra glaze drips down onto the tin foil, and you don't have to clean anything. So cool. This glaze is made from a half a cup of powdered sugar with um, – some like four teaspoons of fresh lemon juice and then like a half teaspoon of lemon zest so it's super lemony and it'll make the scones really sweet because the scones themselves are not sorry the scones are not <laughs> that sweet so we're just gonna glaze these 
And you can do them Whoa. like. Oh. 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 Wow. Screaming goat in here. <laughs> oh my god. Is there a goat? No, no, I don't know if there's a do goat. Do the like do the like do, 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 do. Yeah, wait till she glazes one though and then do like Oh Brian, your tea is your tea is being tea now. It's making right. tea in the tea. Oh, is that a flizz girl? There is. I'm gonna make oh. some more really quick. <laughs> Glaze glaze made out of I, so, I <laughs> glaze is made out of Half a cup of powdered oh, sugar, yeah. four te teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, and a half teaspoon yeah, of lemon zest. But I'm gonna go make more because um, mine didn't last, so my only got through like half. So I'm gonna go make more, and then Meredith, if you wanna like, I don't know if you had a passage or something to read. Yeah. But I'll make more really quick. And then anyway, can we once... scoop them around in the little drippings? No, 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 you can't <laughs> scoop it around. You can't <laughs> scoop it around. Um, so then, once you glaze them, you can either eat them right away, or you can let the glaze harden. Bye. Eric's lesson is after this. Eric's got his own cooking lesson after this. Just yeah, take whatever Eric. fell down. Sorry. Put it back on top. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's what I thought that was. Well, it's working. <laughs> it's a nice <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see how truly <laughs> glistening these. Yeah, are. this is not doing I justice. I feel it's, you can't see how great it is. Eric, you're not good enough. It's, it's gotta, you gotta stop the exposure. Oh, yeah. to get, can you see it? Out. They look really good. Joey, yeah. why don't you hold one up, Joey? Let's hold one. it up and just kind of move it in the light. They're probably. Oh, Whoa, uh oh. Work. Just move it around. Yeah. See it glisten? Looks... Look at that drip right there. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Val, you think it looks good? I can't wait to eat Bowser. it. Bowser. Bowser sees it. Okay. Whoa, so... that glaze. <laughs> wait, you guys. Really? <laughs> We're about to start getting into uh, the famous letter scene. Oh. We're uh. about to. Really quick, let's discuss. I asked everyone what they think of letters in general. Because some people argue that. They don't think that some scholars or weird assholes think that the, the letter scene isn't as romantic as, let's say, he had just gone up to her and professed his love. He oh, said he, really? Instead, yeah, he's like sitting in the, basically what's happening in the scene is that uh, it's a group of people in a room, and Anne is sitting and talking about women's love, which we'll read that passage mm -hmm. to. Um, All this drama's gone down, whereas like the two young hotties that he liked are now married to other, or engaged to other people. <laughs> So, like, now it's kind of open. They're both open. There's so much other drama that we don't have time to get into. But basically, they're both open to love each other now, finally. Yeah. So, um, basically, they're sitting in this room together. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she's talking about woman's love to this other guy. And Captain Wentworth is listening. And he is just like, oh, I can't listen to this anymore. And he pulls out a new piece of paper and starts writing her a letter. She's sitting there right in the room with her. In it, <laughs> and then he, <laughs> and then he gives her the letter, and um, what are you doing? Here? I'm just filming Baz underneath the table. Oh, okay. You're filming it? Thing. It's with my oh. with my telephone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just, so yeah. he hands her a letter that professes his love, and I basically asked everyone if they think that this is less romantic. It's kind of like the idea of like you know sending someone an email asking them out. Some people are like, hey. if you're there, yeah, if you were just like. Yeah. <laughs> well, he yeah. kind of did, like, just kind of yeah. slip it to her and then was like, bye, and like, yeah. leaves. Kind of weird. 23 people responded, and pretty much everyone said they think that this that the idea of writing letters is romantic. It Good. is. It's romantic. It's, it's so just nice. very, I think the one complaint is that it's very, like, the passive. It's like, mm -hmm. here's this letter, because I can't say it to you in person. But yeah. so many, I'm... I definitely better at like getting my thoughts out in a good way, like on paper, right. as opposed oh. to in person where I just be like, the yeah, pretty, right, <laughs> right. Lots of people, lots of people said that too. That they feel like writing letters is good because they can 
they can gather. plan out what yeah. they today and gather they don't have to say it in a nice way. Yeah, they don't say anything that they don't mean, and they get to say everything that they want to what say. What if you wrote it and then read it to them? He wrote this. Oh, that'd be nice, that'd be really actually. Nice. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's, I like that. It's like yeah. a Silver Linings playbook. I haven't seen that yet. Do they? Remember Spoiler just, alert. Sorry, yeah, don't. Don't worry, you don't know who I'm talking about. <laughs> it's an Oscar winning movie, guys. If you haven't seen it, it's <laughs> 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 you know who I'm talking about. Okay, uh this girl Abby thinks that um speaking face to face would mean more. Okay. Uh Megan Zimmerman said she used to think that speaking face to face was the way to go because it's more courageous, but there, you know, have been, she says, there's been times when talking to the person isn't possible or practical, and you get more comfortable writing messages. Uh, I agree. Um, this girl says she, writing be- letters is better for her because of face-to-face stuff. She has anxieties, which yeah, totally oh, agree. Yeah, it doesn't. So, a lot of people have, um, <laughs> so, oh, Sophie says, essentially, we're all writers. It's easy to conjure up beautiful thoughts or feelings of others, but I think we will agree it can be difficult to physically voice these in a most poetic way. That was a tweet? Uh, this is all... I'm just oh. <laughs> That's a tweet. That's a really like good that. tweet. That yeah, good. you really fit those characters. That captured up. so much. <laughs> yeah. I captured a lot. Um, I Oh, Jacqueline says, while well, every girl dreams of her man pouring his heart out in public, I think there's something to be said for a good love letter. Yes, I agree. But you know mm-hmm. what? I don't know about that, the whole what? public thing, you know. Why? Like, would you want to be proposed to? I think about proposals, you know. Would you want a special moment in a bed or, or out in the restaurant? I don't, I'm not, I'm not, what? <laughs> Wait, what? I don't know. I don't I don't know what you mean. mean. Like, do you want it to be just between the two of you? Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah, so, watching it. Yeah. I, I don't know what I was talking about. I was just thinking about people proposing at Applebee's or something. Oh, <laughs> Lord. I don't know. I, don't I was at Medieval Times yesterday for. And somebody proposed? For a, no, but there's a oh. proposal package. There's an engagement oh, package. Oh, no. Oh. That's lame. We're like, the, we're like the trumpet guy proposes for you. <laughs> yeah. That's cool as shit. But it's a package, though, which means it must happen like every yeah, night. Like it's... No. I've never seen it. I've been there twice. Did you have to pay for it? If somebody, yeah. like. Did this something cool, like yeah. got to write, like became a knight or like yeah. jumped onto a horse yeah. from like the it stands. Especially, oh, right yeah, they like yeah. wore my colors, oh. like jousted, like killed somebody. <laughs> yeah, cool. and then they delivered. The and then they're, they're like, like marry me. That'd be cool. Okay, oh, my friend. Is that a package? The scones are ready. Oh, wow. The scones. There's pardons on the scone. That's cool. Yeah. So that's why, oh, that's why you can't switch it around the button. Right. Okay. Yeah. I want them to yeah, say it. Oh. I was like, I bet that would work. <laughs> that looks great. Oh, they look and great. And they might be a little crumbly, but the longer they mm. set, the more sperm they'll be. But I just wanted to serve them so people <laughs> would oh, taste start so Oh, good, man. This is so, so good. I, they look amazing. I'm in heaven more, right? Yeah, there's more. More. Ah! I'm really good. Oh my it's god. It's so soft. Oh, oh, so but Lauren, you're a good cook. <laughs> How do you do this? How do you do it? Lauren, you're amazing. No! Explain yourself. Oh, Lauren, explain yourself. Oh my god. Wow. What is this? <laughs> what? Maya, please. Maya, please. Yeah, all right. Oh all right. God. Lauren, yeah, so Lauren, these are so good. Oh my god. Thanks. God. I'm glad you like them. So, yay, please make them and share them with your friends. Wow. Tell me how you. I mean, I like they ain't gonna be as good as these. You can also make them like if you want to add poppy seeds, you can make like lemon it's poppy good. seed, or you can do orange instead of lemon if you want to do that. A lot of people mm. have been asking about different toppings you can put on. Oh, these. you can do whatever you want. It's your does, world. Does the oh. Lauren at home line have a lemon zest? <laughs> Yes, there's a microplane. It's twenty nine ninety nine at Kohl's. <laughs> Exclusively at Kohl's. Yeah, you can put chocolate. That would be good. You can even make them savory. You can put like bacon or cheese. In oh, whoa! Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Whoa. I know. I'm sorry. Bar- vegetables. Vegetables. What a vegetable of your choice. Wait, you know, guys, if you make these scones at home, please take photos or like, yeah. videos and then post them. On you guys, the silly phone. Oh, so even if they turn out really bad, or especially if they turn out yeah. really bad, yeah. you should also take a picture. How can they find the Facebook page? The Facebook page is facebookcom slash Austin time. You have that shortcut. Yeah. I've been tweeting it like mad lately, guys. Just yeah. look at my tweets. It's right there. You click on it. What's your Twitter? We'll check what the my URL is. Ghosty Diddy. 
Mer uh, Meredith, where does Ghost Diddy come from? Uh, Ghost Diddy comes from, I was working at U of M. <laughs> this oh, is so well. off topic. This is, is uh, we're in the 1800s, and I'm working at U of M <laughs> um, in an office with some really fun people, and we like telling ghost stories, and we had this little ghost that I drew that we cut out of a piece of paper. And we would put it on each other's computers, yeah. and then, like, when we got to our computer, we'd go, oh! and everyone would go, <laughs> <laughs> and like, so, so anyway, my friend Stephanie Anderson was setting up my Twitter. She's like, you have to use Twitter now. I'm making you a Twitter. And she's like, and we tried Mary Diddy, and there, it was already taken, and, like, Diddy was already taken out my nickname. What's so, Diddy from? That's from, that's, that's from like Mary Diddy. Nickname. Okay. Yeah. And then, um. So she loves like, P. Diddy. Yeah, yeah oh, that's one of those. We're like, let's do Ghosty Diddy because we love ghosts. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good Whoa. story. I love yeah. it. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yes. Where'd your Twitter right. come from? <laughs> I don't know. My mom. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do this famous letter. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, this is a real review. Before, before we read the actual letter, you guys know how we're going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> before we read the actual letter, let me really quick read the conversation that was happening that made Captain Wentworth say, oh, I can't bear it anymore. I have to write down my feelings in a letter. Um, so this is this is Anne talking to, uh, who is she talking to? I always forget. Captain Harville. Uh, they're basically talking about this other guy whose wife died, and now he's already fallen in love with someone else and is getting married to someone else. And they're like, that was quick. You know, his wife died. Isn't his heart still hurting for her? And they're talking about that. And like, is this Bennett? They're talking about Bennett. Yeah. I love him. And so they're like, you know, do you think she would have done the same thing? Um, and he's like, poor Fanny, Good she could have not have forgotten him so soon. So this is what Anne says now. Okay. Do you want me do you, are you gonna read this? Yeah, or do you want me to read just read it? No, replied Anne in a low feeling voice. That I can easily believe. It was not in her nature. She doted on him. I'm reading him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Um, That's, yeah. It would not be the nature of any woman who truly loved. Um, and then Captain Harville says, Do you claim that for your sex? Blah, blah, blah. Meaning sex is in gender. And so now she answers. Yes, we certainly do not forget you so soon as you forget us. It is perhaps our fate rather than our merit. We cannot help ourselves. We live at home, quiet, confined, and our feelings prey upon us. You are forced on exertion. You have always a profession, pursuits, business of some, of some sort or other to take you back into the world immediately, and continual occupation and change soon weaken impressions. Ooh. Ooh. So basically, she's real talking. She knows everything. She's basically like, <laughs> men can forget women easier because they have other shit to do mm -hmm. yeah. that takes their mind. In the 1800s, it's true. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> Women had to stay at home. All they could do was, like, that's why everybody played piano, because you had nothing to yeah. do. They you sit and play sad songs. Yeah, so he's like, <laughs> so Captain Wentworth is listening to this going, oh, but I didn't forget her. I really didn't. I tried, but I didn't. Oh, yeah. You know? oh. I'm sorry. I'm getting too into it. Sorry. So anyway, um... <laughs> oh, so basically, yeah, so Captain Wentworth is listening to her talk this way, and he's getting so sad. I'm just going to, I don't know who this is. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just have oh, to yeah. a piece of paper. Oh, yeah, go ahead. It's pulpy, so it's hard to tear. <laughs> it's it's like, like recycled. It's like rubber It's good paper. for the earth, you guys. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> it's like pulp paper. It really it's is. Like Wait till you touch it with your fingers. So we're going to act out <laughs> this. We're going to act out this scene. Yeah, right? Hold it up. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Ooh, I like it. It's silky. Really nice. I like when you talk to me over the <laughs> cups. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is that scene. Oh, wait, I'm I think the rest of us should exit the Yeah, I want him to be alone. The camera <laughs> area. Wait, yeah. Let's clear yeah. out. And then well, we should make a split screen between them. Okay, everybody else is oh, Okay, we're going to move. Okay. This is just how it happens. Why don't you guys move up to these two seats? Yeah, move to the front. Okay. And I'll move no, the camera go. as necessary. Does that sound okay? Yeah, so you want it to be the, on both Bring the camera up. just on the mic. Okay. Um, just on me, please. Make sure there's a slow zoom. <laughs> <laughs> a very slow zoom. Yeah. Um, okay, so, okay. so you got it. Okay. All right. All right, here it goes, guys. This is the thing. Actually, I also look like I'm at a Kid Rock concert. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I also look like that. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, if you were in the 1800s, your hair would be so up. Are you like, reading? Who cares? Yes. It's like, yeah. where are you going to read from? I'm going to just come back. I'm going to go right Right. Okay. You go, Joey. Okay. Where are you going? Do I need to read this? Sorry. We planned this late earlier. Nice. Okay. Nice. Nice. I got to get rid of that. Why are you sorry. guys doing We're doing fancy. I, I am really sorry about this. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so here's Anne Elliot. I can listen no longer in silence. I must speak to you by such means as are within my reach. You pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. Tell me not that I am too late that such precious feelings are gone forever. I offer myself to you again with a heart ever more your, even more your own than when you almost broke it eight years and a half ago. Dare not say that man forgets sooner than woman, that his love has an earlier death I have loved none but you. Unjust I may have been, weak and resentful I may have been, but never inconsistent, inconstant. You have brought me to Bath, for you alone I think and plan. Have you not seen this? Can you not, can you fail to have understood my wishes? I had not waited even these ten days could I have read your feelings, as I think you must have penetrated mine. I can hardly write. I am every instant hearing something which overpowers me. You sink your voice, but I can distinguish the tones of that voice when they would be lost on others. Too good. Too excellent creature. You do us justice indeed. You do believe that there is true attachment and constancy among men. <laughs> believe it to be most fervent and most undeviating in F.W. I must go, uncertain of my fate. But I shall return hither, or follow your party as soon as possible. A word, a look, will be enough to decide whether I enter your father's house this evening, or never. Oh! Yeah. 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 With a nice toilet yeah. flush yeah. by each yeah. yeah. We all heard it. It was immediately yeah, Mr. Hayward start. going into the bathroom, <laughs> pooping the rest of his feelings. <laughs> I you love guys, you to that turn sounded great. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, did you like that guy? Yeah, tweet yeah us. that was good. Tweet yeah. us if you liked that. <laughs> <laughs> tweet us your notes. You guys, I took a really cute picture. Oh, you Aww. did. Aww. Yeah. Really romantic. I liked yeah. that so. Yeah. I hope it had to the get desired effect. It did. It is desired effect on me. Yeah, it was really. Oh, Bowser's tail romantic. wagging is. Oh, isn't that nice? You know what happens in the movies when someone's <laughs> speaking into a microphone? Yeah. It's like real. <laughs> what? Um, the stones are so good, it's unreal. Yeah, yes. it, they are really good. Because some of those scones are like hard. Yeah, yeah. this is soft. Yeah. And I've had a, 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 a bad just... Starbucks scone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not. I don't like Starbucks. No. no. I usually don't really like this. This is so good. But this is like. Oh, I love I've it. changed you. I've changed you. <laughs> so this is honor. Lauren, I haven't. Eaten a lot of the things that you made in your life, mm -hmm. but everything I have has been like incredible. Thank yeah. you so much. It's so consistent. Yeah, it's banana treats. You. you guys haven't had those yet? She forgot to put them in the cookbook. Yeah. Oops. I'm what? sorry. Got a cookbook? Yeah, girl. I want to get that. <laughs> Plug <laughs> it. She's. We never get to see her, so this is a special oh, yes. day. It's special. She's traveled by horse. Yes. Yes, yes. So, anyway, the book ends where after this moment, Anne runs out into the street. Somebody is like, Oh, let me come with you. And she's like, hey, I need you by myself. And then Captain Wentworth sees her and is like, I'll take her from here. And the guy's like, Good, because I need you to go shopping. So, yeah. <laughs> then they're left alone finally, and they walk arm in arm. And she's like, I love you. And I love you, and they love each other. Holy oh, shit! It's crap. beautiful. Yeah, it's really yeah. beautiful. It's a great ending. So oh my god! It can be a little hard to read because I just tweeted it. Someone tweeted a note to Brian for me. That is. That says what? 
<laughs> what say? Uh, Emily off. at Airport per, Airport for Burns said, Joey needs a little more emotion, more paint. This is real shit we're talking about. <laughs> I, I also have another one. Uh, Ricky at Ricky Lavi. <laughs> Ricky Lavi. Ricky Lavi. Ricky Lavi. Ricky Lavi. Says, it was decent. <laughs> but maybe more accent and less laughing. God, be serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, These yeah, are, yeah, wow. So yeah, <laughs> this book can be hard to read because it's so sad at times and like yeah. nothing's good happening for Anne yeah. for a while. For a while she's just like this ugly, like yeah, yeah. sad, sunken in face girl who just has to see the guy she loves every day and like watch him flirt with other girls and she's so sad but uh -huh. it gets so good when like he starts falling back in love with her again oh man yeah um, it's really satisfying she's like here. yeah she's doing yeah. so much it's great such a good she's i a great loved person. it that's those are some yeah. powerful words this was a good book you guys it was really good yeah which brings me to my next topic which is mansfield park but speaking of the good next, book yeah the next uh, book uh, and guys i'm just gonna be honest mansfield park kind of sucks <laughs> it's yeah. kind of bad so, here yeah but what, what were you going to say? I was going to say, here's the problem with Mansfield Park for me. <laughs> They're cousins. Their first cousins are the love interests. They fall in love, and they fall in love at the end. And that was, <laughs> <laughs> and that was totally cool and okay to do back in the day. But I can't get around it. I just keep thinking of my dumbass cousins, and I would never, ever. It's just, it's oh my God. Yeah. Here is another, So that's my problem with this. Here's one. another major flaw of Mansfield Park, is that the main heroine, Fanny sucks. She's so annoying. She's a baby. <laughs> she's like, she always is like, I'm too nervous and starts crying. She's yeah. like, she's super hyper. On oh, a lovely oh! girl. Oh! Oh! Cornelius. Oh, He's a <laughs> You kind of like the other girl more, the girl who is kind of like, she's kind of like the uh, antagonist, but not really, I don't know. Just You're not supposed to be rooting for her, but you kind of. Read it, <laughs> tell me what you think. It's like Fanny is just needs to like pull whatever it is up her butt butt out <laughs> and just get over herself. She's like, you know, she's like, oh, you guys are going to do a staged reading, a play that's so inappropriate. Uh, Everything is just inappropriate. She's like, she's like one of those hyper religious, so, like. She's lame. And, like, I don't even know why Jane Austen included her. They, like, wrote this book because yeah. Jane Austen loved dancing. She loved plays. She loved being a little naughty and silly. And, like, mm. so I don't know. But anyway, I, I wonder if Jane Austen story. knew. Yeah, I have that. I wonder if Jane Austen maybe, like, knew a girl like that and was writing the book based on her or something. Maybe. Yeah. But guys, just get through it. Did you, were there any plays of Jane Austen books that came out during her lifetime? Because there's so many movies of Jane Austen. Oh, no. I don't she, think so. Not died, when she was alive. She had a very short literary career. Mm -hmm. um, it was only like 15 years or something. Yeah, oh, so I, this, after she wrote Persuasion? She didn't even finish it. Her yeah. brother is actually the one who chose the title Persuasion because she didn't even title it before wow. she died. Wow. So maybe it wasn't even supposed to be named that, you guys. That maybe so maybe cool. he wasn't supposed to write that letter at the end. He didn't write the letter. No, there was an alternate ending. There was, yeah, but that's what not. was it? Her original ending was just. Sorry, I'm eating. He mm -hmm. heard that she was engaged, got jealous, and then like ran into her, and she was like, "No, I'm not." And he was like, "Okay, cool, let's get married." Uh, it wasn't near as romantic. No, that yeah. Graduate like... on her. Mm -hmm. So she was she famous for being a writer when she's alive? Only towards well, first she was like when she first published her books, she was anonymous. Um, but then her brother started secretly telling everyone like. You know that book that everyone's reading these days? My sister wrote that. And she was like, stop it. And then right at the end of her life, right at the end of her life it was like announced in London that she was the one who wrote it. And she was there. Her name's Jane Austen. And she was like, all right. I accept it. 
And then everyone was like, was like then she died. Uh, oh, yeah. well, when did she die? How old was she? She died? was 41. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Why did she die? So what happened? She had like a she really had bad Addison's disease. disease. But they didn't know what it was at the time. Right. They just knew she that. was dying, but like they didn't have a name for it she when she died. It, it, was, it was like a horrible, Addison's painful, Addison's horrible disease. Well, yeah. When we went, it's called Addison's disease. <laughs> when we went to Jane Austen's house in, in um, England, we cool. went to... Uh, or we like at the very end of the museum. You go through this whole museum, like her house, and read about all the stuff that she did. And then at the very end, like the last thing you read before you leave, is this letter that her sister wrote, just describing in great detail, like her last moments <laughs> wow. about her, like just be like, oh, oh. <laughs> dying. Yeah, that's not funny. That's so sad. sad. That's a good, it's that's really sad. sound effect, though. Thank you. Yes, yeah. the death. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, um, anyway, uh, see ya. Get <laughs> <laughs> what a great end. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, see ya. Get through Mansfield Park, because after Mansfield Park is Pride and Prejudice. Time and have fun. Also, if you make the scones, post pictures of scones. Enjoy your recipes. Um, what else do I have to say? I think our next live stream will be music themed. Yeah, that's a good idea. What are some instruments? There's a lot in Mansfield Park. There's a lot of harp. I was gonna say. I gotta get my baby on someone who plays harp. I did. I really felt like. All right, let's all say goodbye. And even Mr. Saunders. Yeah. 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 Bye. 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 Thank you so much, Brian. Hey. Stick your face in there. Stick Goodbye. Thanks, <laughs> 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 <laughs>